Hey there, Math Rockstars. This is a short video on how to describe n behavior using some notation. And we're going to use the same examples, the same set of four functions that we used when we were looking at interval notation. So they should all look quite familiar to you. The notation we're going to be using is a little bit different from what I think you've seen before. So let's think about first what n behavior means. You'll remember from earlier that n behavior is the behavior that a graph shows as x approaches the positive or negative infinity direction. So as we're heading out to the right of a graph, we're heading out to the left of the graph, the n behavior is describing what's happening to the height of that graph. So it's describing the range of the function. Um, or you could think about this as the height. of the graph of the function. The notation looks like this. We've got x and then an arrow going to positive or negative infinity. So in words we would say as x goes, or sometimes people use the word approaches, oops, You'll be more likely to use the word approaches when you are in calculus, but goes to is totally fine. As x goes to positive infinity. And the second part of the notation is going to be what's happening to the range or the function itself. The function goes to and then whatever it goes to. So in words, as x goes to positive infinity, the function goes to whatever it goes to. All right. So just remember that when we're describing n behavior, what we're doing is we're describing the range. The first part is going to be describing the domain as x goes to whatever. The second part is describing the range. What's happening to the y values? What's happening to the height of the graph? So as x goes to positive infinity in our first example, so if we're reading in this direction, well, it looks like my y values are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So f of x also goes to positive infinity. With n behavior, though, we, just, we don't just care what's happening as, the, as we're reading from right to left. We're also interested in what happens if we read backwards, if we're reading from left to right. So what's happening if, is if we read backwards heading towards negative infinity? Well, in this case, our graph is still getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So as x approaches neg negative infinity, f of x also goes to positive infinity, just like the other side of the graph. Next one's going to look very much the same as x goes to positive infinity. So if I'm reading in this direction, my graph is continuing to increase. So as x goes to positive infinity, we can write them next to each other like this. Also, f of x also goes to positive infinity. And then if I'm reading backwards, what's happening to my graph? Well, it's also increasing um, as x goes to negative infinity. My function continues to go to positive infinity. So there are two examples of n behavior. Let's look at our last two functions. Here, if I'm looking in the positive direction, my y values are also increasing. So as x goes to positive infinity, f of x also goes to positive infinity. And when I start reading backwards, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to talk about going to negative infinity because the graph doesn't get any lower than zero. So I'm still reading from right to left, but I'm going to stop at zero. So as we read backwards, as x goes to zero, 
Well, what happens to the function as we're backing up? It's also going to zero. The heights go back to zero. Last one. Here, as I'm reading in the positive direction, I'm reading from left to right as my x's go to positive infinity. My y values are now dropping. Right? They're decreasing. f of x goes to negative infinity. And then when I'm reading in reverse, so now I'm reading x values going from right back to left, now my y values are increasing. So as x heads off towards negative infinity, my function is increasing. It's going towards positive infinity. And that's really all you have to write down for end behavior. You can also use words of increasing and decreasing if you'd like, but this notation um, is probably the easiest to use. And that's what I would suggest doing.